Some Pennsylvania counties won't count mail-in ballots until after Election Day. This means we could see delays in Pennsylvania's final results. The president has already questioned the legitimacy of voting by mail. So what happens if President Trump challenges the final results? NBC News Now correspondent Simone Boyce walks through the possible scenarios. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots. President Trump has continued to cast doubt on the upcoming election, and it's led to some major questions. Namely, what happens if the president loses the race and refuses to concede? A bit of a disclaimer here, we don't know what's going to happen next week. No one does. We could very well know the results on Tuesday night. But given the unprecedented nature of this election, we just thought it was important to explore a few possible, albeit unlikely, scenarios, starting with a phenomenon known as the blue shift. Many states have expanded vote by mail or absentee voting. We already are seeing it underway right now because of the pandemic. Professor Edward Foley is an elections expert from Ohio State University. With more than 75 million Americans casting early and mail-in votes so far, he says it could be a while before those ballots are counted. And that's because some state laws prevent those votes from being processed until the polls close on Election Day. In fact, Michigan and Pennsylvania state officials say it could take days. And that's before any legal challenges. It turns out statistically that we've been able to observe since 2000, this pattern that the votes that are counted not on election night, but afterwards, tend to be more favorable to the Democratic Party. Nothing nefarious about that. Given the rise of vote by mail this year, there's a prediction that we're going to see an even greater blue shift, if you will, in some of the states. Now, we've seen this blue shift flip results before. Take the 2018 Arizona Senate race. On election night, Republican Martha McSally had a slight lead. But after almost a week of counting early and mail-in ballots, the results shifted. And Democrat Kirsten Sinema became the winner by more than 2%. So could this election face a similar result? Well, with more Democrats requesting mail-in ballots than Republicans, Foley says it could. You could be very confident that your preliminary count on election night was going to hold and be valid. Well, that's no longer the case. Foley published a study mapping out how the blue shift could set the stage for a contested race. He wrote it last year, before we even knew about the pandemic and a subsequent surge of early voting. It goes like this. Say the race comes comes down to a key state like Pennsylvania, with President Trump holding a slight lead on election night. Then, as the state starts counting mail-in ballots, Trump's lead shrinks and Biden emerges with more votes. Trump then refuses to concede, challenging the validity of those mail-in ballots. The president's rhetoric has set the stage for such a battle, even though millions of votes counted late could still be completely legitimate. They're sending out tens of millions of ballots, unsolicited. Both sides are lawyering up for a potential legal conflict, and there have already been lawsuits. Does a president have a constitutional right to contest an election? Yeah, so any candidate can either concede defeat or ask for a recount or try to challenge the results. If the president pushes his party to take the reins, Professor Foley fears things could get messy in a state like Pennsylvania, where you have a Democratic governor and a Republican-controlled state legislature. When it comes to certifying the votes, who makes the final call? The certification belongs to the voting officials, the election administrators. It's usually a secretary of state. Congress has asked the governor to then sign those certifications and send them to Washington, D.C. The issue that's arisen over the last few months is what if legislatures, in essence, change their mind and somehow get the idea that they don't like the way the certification is going? Where things could get complicated in Congress is if two different groups of people claim to be the electors of any single state. Competing sets of electors could trigger legal battles in state courts, federal courts, even the Supreme Court. But if all else fails, the Constitution does have a backup plan.
Under the 12th Amendment of our Constitution, there's a special joint session of Congress, January 6th. The worst case scenario is there's a breakdown in the process. The Senate wants one answer, and the House of Representatives wants the other, based on partisanship. Now this would be completely uncharted territory. We'd have a new Congress by January 6th, but Vice President Mike Pence would still take charge of this meeting as President of the Senate. And technically, if there's still a disagreement by inauguration, Day, Nancy Pelosi could even become acting president if she's re-elected House Speaker. At least that's what Foley says, admitting this scenario is unlikely. And the Founding Fathers created our government in such a way that there hopefully wouldn't be this kind of deadlock. Have we outgrown the system that they've created for us? There are gaps in the system, unfortunately, and hyper-partisanship can expose those gaps and make the country vulnerable. Professor Foley says he's confident our democracy will survive even if the president refuses to concede. But throwing our electoral system into question, that's another worry. Voting means numbers. It means counting the ballots and trusting the process. And if you're going to challenge the process, you have to have a reason to do so. Because if you only challenge the result because you don't like the result, you're basically attacking the premise of having an election in the first place. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.